That's fucking delightful. Fucking delightful. Fucking good combination playing. Sliding balls into space. Good. Excellent. You have on the fucking road. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Wynn and welcome to the Rugby Report podcast in association with the Sunland Community Soup Kitchen which uh, I'll come on to at the end in more detail in terms of the soup kitchen but for now I have the pleasure of having the company of Malcolm Dugdale and Brett Lyons Davis to talk through Sunderland's comfortable 5-0 win over League One strugglers Morgan tonight. Ross Stewart opened the scoring in the 12th minute after good work from Lyndon Gooch to put us one up. Five minutes later, Gooch has added again down the left when he left uh, the fullback for dead with a neat step over and stood it up perfectly for Nathan Broadhead to make it two with only 17 minutes gone. Uh, but it was 2 0 going into the break and it took us 10 minutes into the second half to make it three when Alex Pritchard finished well after good work from Dan Neal. And then Nathan Broadhead showed his quality once again. When he finished with his left foot to make it four with about 20 minutes left. Um, and then in the last few minutes, Leon Diakou saw a shot, take a huge deflection, loop up into the air and into the back of the net over the goalkeeper to make it five. So five nil to Sunderland uh, tonight against Morecambe. Definitely expected the win, maybe not expected five. So, so Malcolm, we'll start with you, mate, because the last time we talked, it was after the Shrewsbury game, I think, where you sounded pretty miserable after that one. <laughs> So after after a routine win like that, I assume you're pretty happy tonight. Yeah, you you have to. Good evening, by the way, Chris. Yeah, you have to. You have to take the bad days with the good days. And today was a comparatively good day. Can we class this as, you know, something to really celebrate for the moment? Yes, but we have to remember who we played. Um, you can only play who's in front of you. But there was a a chasm in difference of capability for me between the two teams tonight. So let's celebrate the win. Um, and I am happy. But there's some hard work to do in the couple of weeks coming up with the likes of Argyle and Ipswich, isn't there? You know, it could be a different prospect in those games. Yeah, I, I was going to maybe try and do a sweepstake at the beginning to see how long it would take for someone to say you can only play who's in front of you, <laughs> as you know. But, uh, <laughs> but you, you did it straight away, Mal. But there you uh, go. There you go. Uh, but Brett, good to speak to you, mate. It's been a yes, while. Yes, mate. It's been it's been a long time since we've been on a pod together. It has. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's nice nice to be back with you, Chris. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, we've done spaces, but it's been a while since we've done one of these. But yeah, I mean, uh, tonight's game, yeah, I mean, Mal kind of touched on it a little bit. I don't want to take anything away from our performance, but more, we have to admit Morgan were pretty, pretty poor uh, tonight. But I thought the way we went about it, we were entertaining the way we did it, you know, and we followed up the second half from Saturday pretty nicely tonight, Brett, I thought. Yeah, it's, it was one of those funny old games really today because... As you say, it, it it didn't feel like, and obviously there wasn't a, a massive crowd. It was a freezing cold night up there today, so mm-hmm. you, you, you can't give the grudge anybody who decided to watch it. You know, pay ten pound and watch on a stream. <laughs> you know, it wasn't a a swashbuckling, you know, free flowing football sort of thing, but it was very comfortable all day. You know, you know, two two, two lap at half time. There was that period where you thought, if they score now, it's going to be the same old Sunderland. I, I think that might just be the um, the Sunderland supporter mentality in me that worries. Mm. Two 0 is never enough for us, and and that's not just this season. That that's thirty years watching Sunderland play. That that is not <laughs> enough. So it was, um, you know. But as you say, it was it was a, it was a solid performance. The back four. Held well, it was a clean sheet. It's great to see both your, your front two both getting goals. Gooch, after last Saturday's performance, obviously he had a lot of stick after the goal, coming with a couple of assists, and I'm sure we'll talk about more about him. But yeah, mm-hmm. overall, mate, it, it was. I, I was playing. Yeah, we won five nil. You know, you can't complain about that. <laughs> well, well, just quickly, just touching on that, being a bit kind of worried, you know, sporting Sunderland for a long time, Brett. I mean, just sticking with that with that little comment you made there, because about five minutes after we went 2-0 up, we had a little bit of a wobble where they missed a really good chance at the back post where they stuck it right over the bar where he was kind of, well, he was about six yards out and should have put it away. Then a minute after that, they had the disallowed goal. So we were 2-0 up, but it seemed like we kind of took our foot off the pedal as soon as we went 2-0. Uh, it is, and that is that is our, our biggest concern. And I know Danny Collins mentioned it during the... Um, during the during the actual match, that we're at our best when we're pushing forward, and especially at the moment, a team that's you know our back four, you know we, we've got Lyndon Gooch playing at left back, we've got Bailey Wright, who to be fair to him, is quite a good right back, you know he did well against, today, didn't he? Yeah. against Morecambe, he was a good right back, um, you know, and there was up times you know, he scored that great volley in the first half, you know, so we, we're a bit patched together at the back. 
our greatest strength is pushing forward and attacking teams. And, you know, it's, that's, why, that's why I kind of made that it wasn't a swashbuckling performance because you say we did sit back at times, we did let them come at us, where we don't need to. We just keep the pressure on and that's our strength, I think, in this league. So, yeah. but yeah, as I say, it's, uh, it is one of those, isn't it, really? <laughs> Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, I, I'm actually going to be looking forward to the talking tactics piece because it, it seemed to me that the amount of times we attacked on that left-hand side, that Bailey Wright kind of tucked in as that third centre-half kind of went when Lyndon Gooch went off to do his thing. But, um, but I mean, Malcolm, just on that point, I think Brett mentioned Lyndon Gooch as well. 2-0 up within 20 minutes, both supplied by Lyndon Gooch. We talked last time, actually, after that Shrewsbury game about him playing full-back, uh, Malcolm, and tonight, I think he, he obviously enjoyed it because Morgan didn't exactly kind of push him back to do any defending. But but he showed what he can do tonight when he's on at Malcolm. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was harsh for people to only attribute the blame to Gooch for, you know, us ending up with a draw at the weekend. You know, yes, he should have leathered it out. Um, but there was plenty of opportunity for people to stop that goal after he'd made his error. Um, but, yeah, I mean, tonight... He didn't have a lot of opposition to worry about tracking back for. Uh, but, you know, talk about zero to hero. You know, he had a really, really good game. He was he was stepping over the ball. He, he megsied a couple of people at different <laughs> parts through the game. You know, he was clearly enjoying himself. And the interesting thing about tonight, you know, we can't get too carried away beating a team that only just got promoted through the League Two playoffs. And we certainly won't. You know, we're quite a balanced group, I think. But we are terrible at kind of, you know, taking the sword to people that we should take the sword to. And tonight we've done that, you know, we've overcome that hurdle. But yeah, Gooch had a great night. It was great to hear the crowd shouting his name to recognise his efforts as well, you know, because he, he got sledging from, you know, the fair um, minority on, on social media after the weekend. But lovely to see him turn it around and, and get the crowd back on his side rather than on his back. Yeah, I was, I was just going to ask, Malcolm, because you said um, we're quite a balanced group. Did you mean just us three on this? <laughs> on this? Or, did, or did you mean Sunderland fans in general are balanced? I don't mean Sunderland fans in general. Um, <laughs> right, OK. Certainly just not, you know. <laughs> no, no. They, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And as long as it's not offensive and stuff like that, then, you know, say what you think by all means. Yeah. But there, I think there have been a few people getting a little bit carried away. But, you know, there's a bit of realistic lenses in, in the specs of most of the lads I talk to on here, I think. People getting carried away, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean Brett, we've, we've talked about Lynn and Gooch on one flank. And I have to admit, we'll come back on to Nathan Broadhead in front of him because obviously he got, he got two goals. But uh, I, I want to kind of mentioned Leon Diaku on the other side. I thought he looked really dangerous and I thought he looked like almost like almost like an old fashioned winger where he really liked the touchline and he wanted to just turn and just go straight at his fullback. I think the old phrase he's got chalk in his boots, hasn't he? <laughs> at, the end of, at the end of the day. He's do you know what? I, I went and I watched him against um Cambridge a few weeks back and he was obviously playing at that that left he was almost like left back. And mm. bless him, he's not a defender. We know he's not a defender. I know he's had a bit of bit of grief when he came in. I think um, I think Gav touched upon it in the last pod um, with Phil that you know he's he's playing out of position. He's a young lad. He's in a new country. You know, tonight we saw the the things that we want to see in him. You know, he got that ball. He beat his man. You know, the end product wasn't always there. You know, don't get me wrong. It wasn't a, you know a ten out of ten performance on. Everything that went that he wanted to do went right. There's a few crosses didn't happen, but he got on the score sheet somehow at the end. <laughs> you know, it, if it's on target, it goes down as his goal, technically. But yeah, that was a massive deflection. But no, he had a really, really good game. And I think that's the flashes that we see in him that, yeah, actually, there, there is a bit of a player in there. And, you know, if we can keep, you know, I'd say, he's not, don't, just don't play him at left back ever again. You know, that's not his position. You know, <laughs> I say, get him on the wing, get balls over to him yeah. like that and, and let him do do his thing. And I think you've got someone who could be, you know, a very, very good player. Um, yeah, so if, yeah. I, I know one of my mentions are, you know, I want to make sure that he got a special mention tonight. And I think, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased you brought him up so early, in, you know, in the pod. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm impressed. And I think the more minutes he'll get, the the, the kind of better he'll be. And um, I, I think another player on a, on a similar theme, Malcolm, for me, is Nathan Broadhead. Two goals tonight. I think him getting back to full fitness is huge for us this season. I'm hoping the rumours that 
the move might become permanent are true. But do you think he's someone who could just get better and better with the more minutes he plays, Malcolm? Absolutely, yeah. I was really disappointed earlier in the season when he, he took an injury and, and he was out for a little while. And when we haven't got Broadhead in and around the attacking area, um, you know, and Stewart's on his own. Stewart's a very capable leading the line type of striker, but I do think he works better when he's got somebody running off him. And tonight, Broadhead was scary, you know, Um I think one of the lads on the on the WhatsApp group said this boy is a baller, and and I would agree with that. You know he's got a he's got a bit of learning to do. I know he's twenty three, twenty four, but crack and brace. He looked physically disappointed when he got took off because he was after the match ball. I think, and I think he probably could have got it as well because he never slowed up. So yeah, yeah. I mean, he's if if we can continue to develop him, and if we have got a purchase clause in the deal, then that's a big find and. I do think he's got the potential to do very big things in this league and even in the championship if he continues to improve and show what he's got. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's still really learning his trade if you look at how many how many games he's played. But, uh, but I mean, just, just moving on because we're going to run out of time. But, I, I mean, I, I could have mentioned umpteen players from tonight, but just one more I wanted to, to pick out just from the performance just because of last week and the start he's had at the club, is uh, Alex Pritchard, Brett. He's just been so unfortunate. We're getting COVID when he first joined. Didn't seem to get back from that. Then he took a couple more knocks. And just the more I see him play, he just looks better and better every time I see him on the pitch. He's, he looks like he can really start to control games. And the best thing from tonight, well, not the best thing, but the, really kind of, the, the thing that really kind of lifts us going forward is, is he, we got 90 minutes out of him tonight. 100%. Um, I must admit, I was, when he first arrived, I was really pleased when we signed him, you know, and you thought, you know, you don't, you don't sign for 11 million pounds if you're not good and all that. And mm. obviously I know that he, he that the sort of say he had COVID at first and he wasn't fully fit. And when he first started, I wasn't overly impressed with him. I must admit, obviously, that is because of his backstory. You know, these last sort of, you know, four or five games, he has picked it up massively. And he's now become a really important part of our team. And the fact that Embleton can't get back in it says it all. You know, at the start of the season, Embleton, we were building a team around him at one point, And now, now he can't get in it at all. And again, you know, he's just fleeting appearances off the bench so and that that's a credit to how well Pritchard is playing and yeah he's a very good player yeah. there, was, there was a little ball it was right, I think it was the last sort of 10 minutes he put like a little sort of just a, stri- a little you know, slide wall ball through you know, he split two defenders and no one else is on the same mindset as him and it's like um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're a player you can see that but everyone else around you can't so it was yeah he's I'm I'm really pleased I'm, I'm pleased to be proved wrong as I said I, I, I kind of I, I questioned him at first when he you know the first six, seven games a season. I thought, well, I don't see the big thing about him. He's a very mm. good player. Very good player. Then, like like I said, I could have picked out um, umpteen different players now for good performances. But, I mean, uh, just in general, Malcolm, second half performance against Oxford was good. Performance tonight, it might be difficult to tell with it being Morgan, as we've mentioned, but how close do you think we're getting back to the form that we saw in the early part of the season? Um. We're only ever sorry. I just had to open a can of beer there. My apologies. <laughs> and uh, unlike recent pods, I've done it away from my so- phone, so I don't break my iPhone with a spray. Um, what, what do I think? I, I think I think it's cracking to have a little bit of momentum, and I think it's really positive and very important for the squad confidence that we did what we did at Oxford and only got a point, and then went out and carried on in the same manner. And actually, you know, dealt some pretty decent blows to a team that, you know, we're always going to find it challenging at the stadium of light. It's cracking to see that the lads are getting some confidence. Um, you know, Dan Neil was putting some beautiful passes through again today. Like you say, Chris, you could go back to front and comment on how many in the team were, you know, having a really good situation um, end to end, really. I don't think Hoffman had to make a save till about the 65th, 70th minute. And then that was a pretty weak header from from their lad, who, who in other competitions has been a pretty decent forward option. So, yeah, we've got to keep this momentum going, though. That's the thing, you know, we can't ease off and we've got to take on teams that are in the upper half of the, of the, the league in and around us and, you know, have the same intensity the press today was fantastic. You know, 80 odd minute, we're chasing them down in their right back position. We've got to keep doing that. But yeah, yeah, it's good confidence building. You know, it's good to see them when they keep it going. You're saying there about, about hitting form. 
we're now five unbeaten in the league. So since Sheffield Wednesday, you know, Ipswich was 2-0, Shrewsbury won all, Cambridge 2-1, Oxford won all. So all these people have been having a go saying, oh, we've not won in so many games. All of a sudden, we've now, we've now got a run going. And to be honest, yeah. mm. we're not playing, you know, we're missing half a team. We're not playing, I say, today, although we won 5-0, it wasn't, I say, it wasn't a swashbuckling performance. It wasn't like we didn't blow them away, but we just grinded them down. We're still second, third gear, and we're still picking up points. We're still, you know, I th I've not seen, I'll be honest, I've not seen the league table. So I think we're we third now, um, as it stands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're third, two, po two points behind uh, Wickham and Rotherham, and we've got a game in hand over Wickham. Well, that's so, you know, what are we panicking about? <laughs> you know, once we get the, well, we've, got, we've got January to come, we've got players to come back, you know, let's chill out. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is the question I was going to put to you, Brett. You know, at the end. Sorry, I've you asked your own this... question. <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. Well, I'm going to, I'm kind of going to put it in a different way to you. You know, the South Stand were chanting Lee Johnson's red and white army at the end. We've won 5 0. Yes, okay, it might have been Morgan, but we won 5 0. Yeah. We're third. Like we said, two points off the top. What what have we got to grumble about at the minute, Brett? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> See, simple answer. No, no. Do you know what? You know, don't get me wrong, Chris. You know, I, I would I would love us to be top of the league, you know, I don't know, yeah. four or five points clear, nice and relaxed, you know. But we're not. Yeah. Let let's get over the fact that we're a Premier League team in League One. We're not. We're a League One team in League One. You know, as much as it pains me to say it. We've been there four years. We're a League One team. You know, we've got a, some really good young players coming through. We've got a, a squad that's completely depleted because of injury. We're two points off top. It's a game in hand against the second place team. And we're still in touch. You know, I'm not concerned at the moment. I still think this team will go up. There's the, all these teams, and I said this the other week, that the, the teams always pick up momentum. That's the big thing about it. Momentum is that what we need. And as, if we're picking, you know, we're now five unbeaten with a depleted team. You know, we had, we've had a little bad patch. Every single team in this league is going to have a bad patch. It's going to happen. We're going to have it. Plymouth will have it. Wickham will have it. You know, they're all going to have bad patches. Come the end of the season, that's when, you know, in the championship rounds, when you can start picking up points and you then, you then start picking up these wins continuously, I think we're going to be there or thereabouts. So, you know, we'll strengthen in January. We've got a team, you know, we'll get injuries back in January. What are we panicking about? The only other thing that I think we should be pleasantly surprised about, because it doesn't always happen with Sunderland, is look at the players that we got in the summer and how they're starting to now blossom. Surely that paints a good picture for what we can do in the January transfer window to help us to get across the line. You know, we're not signing 36-year-old bloody ex-championship strikers anymore who want a paycheck and an easy life, you know. We're signing young lads, we're bringing young lads through. So I think the... The strategy and the, the the view and the approach that we've set up should hopefully mean we're going to sign better in January than we have before. So we've got a better chance of pushing on as well. So, you know, yeah. a number of reasons to be positive, but let's not get carried away. Yeah, well, I think that, that's, a, that's a crack and full stop that Brett put on it and a, and a nice little postscript that, uh, that Malcolm added to that. So um, I, think, I think that leaves the football chat there, gents. But just on a different note, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, you may or may not have seen that the Rugger Report campaign to raise funds for the Sunderland Community Soup Kitchen got underway at the beginning of December. Uh, last time I looked, which was about at full time, we were about 100 quid short of £34,000, which, which is just uh, incredible. And uh, we're so grateful to everyone who has contributed to that. Um, if you haven't, or if this is the first you're hearing about it, we'd be very grateful um, for anything you could donate uh, towards that fund. Um, the Sunday Community Soup Kitchen do amazing work and uh, every penny helps them to change people's lives. We're doing various things. We've got a fitness thing going. I'm sure that's all over social media that people want to join that. And um, we've got a 24 hour Twitter spaces starting on Friday evening. I think it is, which I'm gutted I'm missing out on because I'm away for the weekend. But uh, look out for that. It's possible we could have some pretty amazing guests appearing on that, all being well. Uh, so look out for that on social media and on the website. And please donate if you can. But as tonight goes, uh, thanks again for listening. And uh, keep a look out for the report, of course, for all the build-up for the weekend's game against Plymouth and all the reaction afterwards. But from us, it's bye for now. Where am I going? I don't know. Where am I hidden? I'm searching all and always I am on my way.